Don't nothing stir up more controversy in the church than money, tithes, offerings, expense accounts, and sensitive people. You know, uh, there's a story in the Bible that talks about a rich fool. And we're going to talk about a fool and his money. And, you know, when it comes to that, let me tell you, I don't kiss no toes. And I would use another part of the anatomy, but I will refrain. And so whether it's tithes, offerings, expense accounts, or people who are stubborn or super sensitive when it comes to money, let me tell you, money is simply a barometer that God uses to test your spiritual life. If you read uh, Luke chapter number 16, the Lord says, if you're not faithful over unrighteous mammon, which is money, then who's going to commit to your trust true riches? So true riches is not something that's printed on a, a printer, you know, with faces of dead presidents on it. True riches are eternal. They last forever. You know, it can't, uh, the money that we get in this world, it can't endure the fire. That ought to let you know right there that it's not really valuable. You strike a match to it, put it on a $100 bill, $500 bill, whatever it is, and it'll go up in smokes because that's how valueless it is. But then you take something like gold, precious stones, you, it endures the fire. So that's valuable, you know. And uh, when we find in the Bible here, Jesus says that there was this rich man who had so much abundance that he had no room to put all of his stuff. So he decided after consulting with himself, what shall I do? He said, for uh, my barns are not capable of uh, handling this harvest. He decided to tear them down and rebuild bigger and better ones. And then he would lay up goods for himself, watch this now, for many years. That's what a rich person is. But the real deal is, man, uh, if you can't live without working or getting any income for a few years, you ain't rich. You, I don't care how much you make. Uh, if you don't get it coming consistently, you live from paycheck to paycheck like everybody else. You know what I mean? So he decided that... Uh, that's what I'm going to do. But it said there was a council in heaven. And God said, that night your soul will be required of you. Then who shall these things be that you have laid up for yourself? And the Lord says, so is he that is rich, but is not rich towards God. So he did not condemn the man's riches. He condemned him for not being rich toward God, putting all of his trust in his money. Are you following me? And we find in his life that that fool and his money soon parted. Now, it may not be that extreme for some of you who are foolish with your money, because when you get it, you'll find the sharks just smell it. They'll come swim around you, offering all kind of investments and enticing you with different type of things that are nothing but scams and uh, fraud, you know, and people get caught up in it because if you are not wise when it comes to money, you will soon see it departing from you because a fool and his money will soon depart. Come on here, somebody. Or either uh, you put it in pockets with holes in it, you know. And so that goes back to the tithing part. You know, people say, well, should we tithe or should we not? You know, is that Old Testament? And some say, well, you can't give an offering until you pay your tithes, you know. And so there's a controversy uh, oftentimes with believers when it comes to tithes and offerings. But one thing that you can check is, uh, because the Bible does mention a curse upon a certain uh, book, uh, in the book of the Bible called Malachi, where God says you are cursed with a curse. And that means that you can't keep money. You know, you put money in your pockets or your pocketbook and it got holes in it and it just go away and you don't know where it goes. Or he blows on it and you just back to where you started, although you worked hard and you gained income, but you ain't got nothing to show for it. You might indeed need to be looking at that tithing situation to make sure you're not under no financial curse. 
You get what I'm saying? But uh, I leave that up to the individual, you know, because you'll find in the New Testament that people just didn't give a tent. Some of them sold their houses, their fields, and they gave it all, you know. So it's what God leads you to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? In line with his written word. Because if you are a fool, you and your money will soon part. 